Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some storms which could potentially be severe across Queensland, Southeast, and New South Wales, Northeast. We'll talk about a severe thunderstorm outbreak potential for Victoria, some showers and storms up in the Northern Territory, and a potential thunderstorm outbreak in the 10 day forecast period across New South Wales and Queensland. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So, for the past 48 hours, we have seen some storms fire up across Queensland southeast, which is where we're going to start off today's forecast, talking about the thunderstorm forecast down there. Um, these storms here have been non-severe for the most part so far. They've been interesting to watch develop, but again, nothing too crazy. We do have another chance of thunderstorms this afternoon and evening. The majority of these storms should be concentrated in New South Wales, northeast around Moree and Lightning Ridge. We've still got the chance of some storms up along Queensland, Sunshine Coast, and then inland uh, along or well, inland from Toowoomba down towards sort of St. George and Thallon on the Queensland New South Wales border. I'm not putting the chances of these storms being too high. Certainly not severe, I don't think. I think today is going to be a pretty calm day, all things considered. These showers will persist though, however, into today and tonight. And along with this cold front, which they're going to get caught up into, they're going to be dragged across the northeast of New South Wales by tomorrow morning. And they'll cause some rain, potentially some heavy falls up in New South Wales northeast. Um, ahead of these... Um, Ahead of this sort of frontal band, there's going to be sort of a trough that pokes out from it, extending from a low pressure area in northern Queensland. But this trough line here, uh, associated with this frontal band extending into the Tasman Sea, has the potential to fire up storms along its frontal boundary on the southeastern side of Queensland. This is tomorrow afternoon around Warwick, Toowoomba, and then up towards Roma. We're going to be watching out for some thunderstorms there. And these thunderstorms do potentially have the chance to go severe. I'm just looking at the setup here. There's going to be enough heat, enough moisture, and enough instability in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to potentially go severe. So we will be watching for severe thunderstorm chances in the northeast of New South Wales and the southeast of Queensland. I'm giving the chance of thunderstorms at any spot sort of between a line uh, from St. George down towards Tari in the northeast of New South Wales and then from St. George up towards Maroochydore in the Queensland Sunshine Coast. So kind of anywhere in this sort of triangular area tomorrow afternoon. The chance of thunderstorms being around 80% for these locations uh, and then the chance of severe thunderstorms, they'll most likely happen around sort of Toowoomba and Warwick at some point around sort of 3 or 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. There is still a chance of severe thunderstorms under the Gold Coast and the Brisbane Metro. However, the chances there is lower, but I give the chance of severe thunderstorms around there being around 30 to 40 percent tomorrow. So again, an elevated chance, but nothing too crazy. We're not expecting an all-out severe thunderstorm outbreak. And also behind the system as well, in some pretty favorable conditions for thunderstorms with some high levels of instability uh, between sort of orange up towards the Lightning Ridge on that line there, uh, adjacent to the foothills of the Great Dividing Range. I am expecting the chance of some severe thunderstorms in New South Wales as well. But again, they will clear out by later tomorrow evening. This is for Thursday, by the way. So again, we will be watching things very closely throughout the course of today, and I'll give you an update or two if necessary tomorrow on these systems. Very interesting to watch, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, this is certainly now a new thing on the forecast. We do have some high rainfall accumulations as well expected from this weather system. You can see 30 six hour rainfall accumulations from today until midnight Thursday expected to be rather elevated across parts of New South Wales peaking at around 50 millimeters outside of Moree averaging between sort of 25 and 50 millimeters and because it is frontal and I'm expecting a pretty gnarly rain band to develop out of this system I do actually believe that the northeast of New South Wales is going to get some pretty consistent falls above uh, 25 or 30 millimeters to the 9 a.m. on Friday I expect the heaviest of falls to be kind of between sort of uh, maybe around six 6 to midday tomorrow, 6 a.m. to midday tomorrow. There could be some heavy falls here and there um, later than that as well with thunderstorms. But once the thunderstorms do kick up, which will most likely be in the northeast of New South Wales and the southeast of Queensland, the predictability, the rainfall goes out of the window and I'm expecting much more um, inconsistent rainfall results across parts of southeast Queensland, especially around the scenic rim where they can pick up some pretty gnarly rainfall accumulations from these weather events. Uh, in terms of instability, which is something that I've been talking about quite a lot in this forecast, we can see that there's high levels of energy in the atmosphere. The convective available potential energy forecast looks fantastic for thunderstorms at this time. You can see values high uh, across much of northeastern New South Wales. But I mean, these are the values we expect to see around this time of the year. Definitely the values that we are starting to expect to see develop on the forecast. This is definitely a very early start to some thunderstorms uh, into the thunderstorm season for northeast New South Wales and southeast Queensland. Normally, we don't start to see this behaviour on the weather 
the models until uh, early October. However, it isn't far away when we're going to start to see things like this fire up pretty consistently. Talk about a short, sharp end to winter. Just two weeks ago, they were seeing sub-zero temperatures and snow up in the ranges up here, and now we're seeing a thunderstorm outbreak. So that short, sharp end to winter that I was saying back in April, that has came to fruition in all of its glory, that's for sure. We're going to keep it on the topic of thunderstorms as well, but we're going to head down into Victoria, where we do have some thunderstorms expected throughout the course of today. Now, associated with this low-pressure system that's going to be moving through Victoria, I have highlighted the chance of a potential severe thunderstorm outbreak throughout the middle parts of the state between Ballarat, Bendigo, up towards Shepparton, and then across towards Mildura in the state's northwest. Now, the chance of severe thunderstorms still does remain low, but with the passage of this front between a line extending from a sort of Port Phillip Bay across towards Mildura, a little bit inland from those locations, uh, Port Phillip Bay, I guess, uh, I'm expecting the chance of some thunderstorms throughout the course of today, which is very interesting indeed, especially for this time of the year along Victoria. They don't normally see this type of strong cold front activity moving through. Uh, now, this is associated, like I said, with the cold front. So the other threats from this system, such as wind, they're not really there. Nothing worth talking about at all. I guess wind gusts will peak out at around 50 k's an hour. And some good rainfall accumulations as well are also possible throughout the course of today. In fact, over the next 12 hours, looking at accumulations up towards 20 millimetres, in fact, up to 25 millimetres in the mountainous regions outside the Gippsland uh, areas, kind of south of Omeo down towards Sale and Hayfield. We're going to be looking at some decent rainfall accumulations there. But once you get into the sort of the western part of the state, the rainfall becomes quite light and very unpredictable, unpredictable rather. Uh, so again, I won't be making a proper forecast on that. It is just a really hard sell this forecast here. Much needed rainfall. Every drop counts in Victoria right now. However, it's not going to be looking like drought breaking rainfall here, which is rather unfortunate because like I said, they do really, really badly need it in Victoria. Now, just before we go full-blown tropical, we're going to talk about tropical far north Queensland and talk about the rainfall that's going to be moving through there in the next 10 days. They have backed it down again on the forecast, which is interesting. However, we are still going to be looking at about showers for the next sort of 48 hours and pretty consistent showery activity as well up there. Uh, the showers have temporarily eased off and they will continue to ease off throughout the course of today. But then later tonight, we're expecting showers to pipe up again, especially into the day trip up the looks of things. Some showers will also continue throughout Thursday before clearing out for a couple of days Thursday evening and through Friday and then in towards Saturday as well. I believe, I believe the showers do pipe up again Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning and they could be heavy at times throughout Saturday and Sunday. I'd not be surprised if two-day accumulations between Saturday and Sunday to the 9am on Monday approached 50 millimetres of some of the locations up in far north Queensland. Like I said, not enough rainfall to flood a drain pipe up there. However, uh, every little drop up here really does count and it will count towards a real problematic rainfall that we're going to be seeing pipe up in the next month and a half. Uh, and the map that I always like to use in these videos is the soil moisture map. I mean, just take a look at the drought, uh, the soil moisture anomalies up here. We've got massive soil moisture values where the ground is just completely saturated right now which is looking problematic for flood season. Any sort of rainfall up here is just going to become runoff. It has started to become just a little bit dry around Innisfail and Tully. I think it's just starting to go towards the uh, slightly above average into more of the average numbers across parts of Innisfail and Tully, which is good to see. However, uh, the Dane Tree is still absolutely saturated this time, and it is looking pretty concerning for when those real rains do arrive. We're going to be seeing some pretty significant flooding up there uh, in a rainfall event that drops 500 millimetres in a 48 hour period, which I'm expecting to happen by the end of the year, that's for sure. So again, we will keep a close eye on far north Queensland, but it is right now all signs are pointing towards a pretty worrying flood season. I'm just going to keep it on the rainfall accumulation map. I mean, you can see it here. I've just spoiled a little bit of it, but 10-day rainfall accumulations across the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland looking very healthy now and very tropical indeed. Now, what is driving all of this? Well, spoiler, it is a low pressure system in the middle of the Northern Territory that is expected to fire up some gnarly thunderstorms over the next sort of eight to 10 days. The Axis G3 is calling for a rain bomb all over the Northern parts of Australia. We'll get to that forecast in just a little bit as well. Uh, but first off, for the Northern Territory, at least from the East, we have forecast model calling for hardly any rainfall to pipe up until about Sunday or Monday. We start to see a bit of an onshore flow here and I'll turn the isobar map on but you can see a low pressure system just starting to develop around the Darwin area this time and on that low pressure system along the pressure contours here it's going to have a little bit of a trough extending across the central parts of the Northern Territory and that's going to be firing up some thunderstorms and some rain which could be heavy at times throughout Monday and Tuesday next week. Now I said a couple of days ago that this was a new thing on the forecast 
past, and it's unusual for this time of the year. But considering the consistency that the Eastern Rift has had over the last four runs of its forecast, I am now very happy to call this system a pretty much certainty on the forecast models, at least in how the Eastern Rift is saying it, which means it's going to pipe up sometime Monday, probably into the afternoon hours. We're going to see showers and thunderstorms develop across much of Central Northern Territory, down towards Elliott, Tennant Creek, Canteen Creek, and then down towards Alice Springs. Even they could get a few sprinkles of rainfall. The majority of the rainfall will be concentrated into the east and the northeast of the state, and very little of it actually crosses the border into Queensland by the looks of things. But you can see showers continuing through Monday, Tuesday, and in fact they could be heavy at times with this low pressure trough extending across much of the Northern Territory. And then that kind of looks like it kicks off the wet season for Kakadu at least. I mean, look at this. Just showers and thunderstorms being pretty consistent there in the afternoon hours from the, the couple of days after that, which is very interesting to see, especially for this time of the year. Uh, let's take a look at rainfall accumulations from this weather system. So like I said, piping up on Saturday, some pretty big rainfall accumulations for this six-day rainfall forecast, up to 200 millimetres across the Northern Territory is far north. Very healthy indeed, especially for this time of the year. Uh, this is much above average rainfall, and it has been on the forecast for a couple of days now, so I'm certainly saying that this is a uh, high likelihood of occurring right now. I think after this weather period, we, uh, weather patch, we will start to see more consistent showers and storms firing across the Northern Territory and the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. So again, we will have to watch the Northern Territory pretty closely. This rainfall here, up to 200 millimetres, it isn't too much of a flooding concern, especially into Kakadu, but it could cause problems for some of the gravel roads up here. So if you are travelling through Kakadu or you're about to move into a very remote and inaccessible part of the Northern Territory, I'd recommend sticking close or on um, paved roads or very well maintained roads and I'd probably avoid the northeast of the Northern Territory from about Sunday onwards. This rainfall here will not only make for an unpleasant camping experience but it could also cause some problems for roads. Again that's a very niche scenario travelling through this section of the Northern Territory, a uh, very very remote part of Australia. However again just the hands up that this rainfall could be pretty significant and significant enough to cause some problems for roads. Now, the second solution I wanted to be talking about was the Axis G3. Now, this is the Bureau of Meteorology's forecast here, which is interesting considering the Bureau of Meteorology has differed wildly from the Eastern Blue and the GFS, which are two notoriously very uh, uh, reliable forecast models. Generally, what they say comes to fruition, but I don't actually kind of despise the Axis G3 solution. I think it is pretty well reasoned. Now, trough line does extend across the central parts of Queensland. You can see it here. It does fire up some thunderstorms on Monday and Tuesday in, the, in a very very similar fashion to how the East Marouf fires up its thunderstorms across the Central Northern Territory. The Axis G3 just does it about 500 kilometers towards the east. So again, I wouldn't completely rule out this forecast here, but by about Tuesday night, it starts to become just a little bit more wackier with a big front kind of developing out of this system and moving across Queensland and into the southeast with some pretty heavy rainfall accumulations there and potentially a thunderstorm outbreak, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. This is a little bit more of a wackier forecast and considering it doesn't have other more model supporting it. I'm not inclined to run with this forecast here from the Axis G3. The Eastern River from the GFS are loving that scenario in the Central Northern Territory, whereas the Axis G3 is now calling for something completely different. And it does speak on the rainfall accumulations here. I mean, much of Queensland expecting in excess of 25 millimetres from the Axis G3's forecast, with some spots around Huendon expecting up towards uh, sort of 70 or 80 millimetres, perhaps even 90 millimetres as well. Mackay expecting a healthy 70 millimetres from this weather system and some good accumulations down towards Ogmore and Rockhampton as well. Uh, so yeah, an interesting solution here from the Axis G3. It's certainly something worth the watch at this time. I do just kind of more prefer the Eastern Rift at this time, but I will keep you posted on this weather event. Probably doesn't deserve about five minutes of the video considering it is across remote Northern Territory. However, again, all weather is interesting weather and I will keep you guys posted, especially if it does go into a more populated kind of risk zone. And just to wrap this video up right now, I would like to talk about a potential severe thunderstorm outbreak across the later parts of next week. So there's going to be a cold front that sweeps up from the south and impacts Tasmania, Victoria and parts of South Australia next Wednesday. And I've watched this for the last couple of days. You can see it here as it sweeps up, it brings uh, well, this cold, moist air collides with some warm, moist air, and you know that that makes a perfect breed for thunderstorms. You can see thunderstorms expected to fire up across parts of the northeast of New South Wales throughout Thursday and into Friday. The Eastern Blue isn't all supportive of this forecast. The GFS has been a little bit more supportive as of late, however, they have just recently canned it on their latest forecast run. It's the Axis G3 that's been going kind of to town on this forecast here with this low pressure 
pressure system sweeping through from this cold front and it does create a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak next Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and, and this is just a heads up at this time. I think Wednesday afternoon into Thursday afternoon, I think across parts of New South Wales and Queensland, there could be some pretty good conditions for a potential thunderstorm outbreak. The likelihood of that, however, I'm giving very low at this time, but I'm just putting it out there that there is the chance of a potential thunderstorm outbreak, but I will keep you very much in the loop and posted on this weather event if it does come to fruition. But that is a long-winded Australian forecast update, the majority of it being thunderstorm-based, and you know it's getting close to wet season when it starts turning thunderstorm-based, so that is great to see. I'm very excited to track thunderstorms and severe weather this wet season. That is all for me today. Thank you so much for your recent support in the videos as well. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. A special shout-out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them, so again, their support is greatly appreciated. But that is all for me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.